Chapter 2, The Mushroom Life Cycle For you to use mycelia as healing membranes, a basic understanding of the mushroom life cycle is helpful. Although we notice mushrooms when they pop up, their sudden appearance is the completion of cellular events largely hidden from view, until the inquisitive mycophile digs deeper. Although mycologists have a basic understanding of the mushroom life cycle, we are clueless how mushroom species interact with most other organisms coexisting in the same habitat. With each nuance revealed, the body intellect of mycology expands, and our knowledge slowly inches forward. What is so exciting about mycology is that the depth of undiscovered knowledge lying before us is more vast than our minds can imagine. Mushrooms reproduce through microscopic spores, visible as dust when they collect in mass. When the moisture, temperature, and nutrients are right, spores freed from a mushroom, essentially mushroom seeds, germinate into threads of cells called hyphae. As each hypha grows and branches, it forms connections with other hyphae from compatible spores to create a mycelial mat, which matures, gathering nutrients and moisture. From mycelium, cells aggregate to form a primordium, called pinheads, or baby mushrooms by growers. Under optimal conditions, the transformation from spores to mycelium to mushroom can take just a few days. Mushrooms can be divided into two basic categories, depending on how they form predeterminate or indeterminate. Most mushrooms are predeterminate, meaning the stem, cap, and gills preform in the primordial state. If the young primordia are damaged, deformities appear in adulthood. Less common are the indeterminate mushrooms, including many Ganodermas, Phalus swinitsii, and the rare Brigioporus nobilissimus. Their mycelia form primordia that envelop sticks and twigs as they grow. If these young mushrooms are damaged at this stage and go on to recover, they mature with little trace of wounds. Mushrooms display many artful forms adapted for the purpose of dispersing spores. Classic button mushroom, hoof-shaped conch, which has many pores and hence is called a polypore, ridge-forming chanterelle, toothed hericium, coral-like romaria, leafy sporasis, and cup-forming auricularia. These mushrooms, so diverse in shape, produce spores from similar club-like structures called basidia, which arise from a specialized layer of cells called the hymenium. In oyster and button mushrooms, the hymenial layer covers the surfaces of the gills. Despite their anatomical differences, these mushrooms produce microscopic spores in a similar way. Many mushrooms launch spores from basidia, which populate the gills on oyster mushrooms, for instance, and emerge in increasing quantities as the mushroom body matures. The vast majority of species produce four spored basidia, which are jettisoned in pairs with enough force to throw them inches away from the mushroom. Nicholas Money, measured this force as a 25,000 Gs, approximately 10,000 times the force experienced by the space shuttle astronauts escaping the gravitational pull of Earth to obtain orbit. Although spores tend to fall near their parent mushroom, trails of spores can sometimes be seen wafting in the air. Correspondingly, spores tend to be most concentrated closest to the ripening mushroom, with the concentration decreasing exponentially with distance. However, many insects and mammals also participate in distribution. Drawn by the mushroom scent, insects use them as a home for their larvae, which then grow up and carry spores with them when they leave the nest. Mammals eat mushrooms for nourishment, and many spores survive digestion and are dispersed through the animal's waste. Mycologist James Trapp of Oregon State University showed that voles and flying squirrels ate subterranean truffles in old growth forests, and in turn, spotted owls ate the flying squirrels and the voles. However, scientists do not yet know whether the scat from these spotted owls harbors viable truffle spores. James Trapp discovered that these mammals' diets are dependent on truffle mushrooms, and that from the animal's fertile fecal droppings, the subterranean truffle mushroom is assured wider dispersal of its spores through the forest. This interdependency between animals and fungi is only one example of many in nature. That so many mushrooms compete for distribution and safe harbors for their spores may be one reason why so many spores are necessary. 
David Aurora reports in Mushrooms Demystified that a large Ganoderma aplanatum is estimated to liberate up to 30 billion spores a day and more than 5 trillion a year. This prodigious output of spores is necessary for fungi to find new habitats in which to thrive. Species like chanterelles are slow to release spores, typically producing mushrooms that persist and continue to release spores for many weeks. In contrast to fast collapsing inky caps, which sporulate and liquefy within hours. Species vary in the timing and duration of spore release, depending on temperature, moisture, habitat, their animal partners, and their own constitution. Within a species, younger, thicker-fleshed mushrooms are typically more succulent than older ones and correspondingly have fewer spores. With oysters and buttons, for instance, the flesh above the gills, thick when young, thins as each wave of spores is released by successions of basidia. Generally, when a mature mushroom stops producing spores, it becomes an essential food source for people, deer, bears, squirrels, voles, and insects from gnats to arthropods, and no doubt influences legions of other organisms in the food chain. Once spores are produced, most are quick to germinate. The spores of some mushrooms, like oysters, can germinate as soon as they leave the basidia and find a hospitable niche, whereas others, like shiitake, germinate more readily after drying out and then rehydrating. With many mushroom species, germination begins in the dimpled depression on the spore. In the first minutes, this process looks like that of a seed sprouting. The sprout-like hypha mitotically divides. Next comes the mating of hyphae from two compatible spores, each of which is mononucleate, having half of the code necessary for producing fertile offspring. After their mating, when the hyphae fuse to form one mycelium, the resulting cellular network, called a dicarion, is invigorated, binucleate, and capable of producing descendant fertile mushrooms with spore-bearing ability. In the laboratory and in nature, cultures from, from mated spores grow far faster than mycelium originating from a single spore. You can grow mushrooms from spores or tissue. If you are creating your own cultures, it is essential that you use mushrooms that are fresh, if fresh mushrooms are not available, you can purchase cultures, spawn, or spores from commercial sources. What are the differences between the cultures created from spores and those created from tissue? Each mating of two spores expresses but one of several possible phenotypes from the genome of the contributing mushrooms. In contrast, using a piece of living tissue from the mushroom, cloning, captures the exact genetic composition of the contributing mushroom. Cloning usually requires knowledge of sterile tissue culture technique and a clean room laboratory. For more information on these techniques, refer to the books listed in the paragraph below. Many mushrooms can also be propagated naturally from broken stem butts, but, which is another, although low-tech, form of cloning. When stem butts regrow, or if you clone a mushroom by taking a piece of internal flesh and placing it on a petri dish filled with sterilized media, you are capturing the exact individual mushroom in hand. This book reveals easy-to-use techniques using spores, spawn, and stem butts for getting mushrooms into culture without needing a laboratory. For more detailed descriptions of mushroom life cycles, see my book, Growing Gourmet and Medicinal Mushrooms. I also highly recommend The Fungi by Charlie Watkinson and Goodday and Fungal Morphogenesis by David Moore, both of which are available through fungi.com.